welcome to ifanam creative zone for my guest today having met her and having seen the kind of work she she does i would just say that she is unstoppable we are pleased to have with us today pallavi chakravarti the executive creative director of tapro pencil hi pallavi how have you been doing i am as well as well as well as can be in these times <laughs> <laughs> right so firstly we just want to speak to you about this entire experience of creating up its remote captivity how is it for a creative see the fundamental of uh, the creative process actually the 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 real boardroom of the creative process is in here right so so it doesn't uh, you know on paper it should not matter whether you're sitting in office or whether you're sitting at home uh, right. but of course theorem and practical is different when it comes down to actually working there are things that are sorely missed so while it is possible it is possibly one of the functions that would, uh, that can be carried out no matter where a person is so to that end we have an advantage because there's no reason for people to actually be together and hold hands when creating and thinking but right. there's no denying that being together and being in the spirit of you know an agency atmosphere dealing with your clients actually face to face it sort of uh, catalyzes the process so right. um i would say that, uh, i would say that ours is a line of work which hasn't come to a standstill uh, but definitely we're getting we're adapting it's it's a right. new way of doing uh, the same thing so things that would take 2 or 3 hours to do if you were to just sit down and thrash things out get into a room with a bunch of people all the people who were responsible for a particular project things would just you know move and today it takes a lot more you will go and think you will have somebody's baby will be crying somebody will have uh, right. something to you know prepare uh, the, somebody will be doing the dishes and, and uh, you know it's it's taught us this uh, lockdown has taught us that you know i need to log off now because i have not washed dishes in 3 days as a matter so it's it's so uh, it does that's the flow may have been interrupted but at the end i'd like to think that we have managed to still create via via technology we still managed to be in touch still brainstorm it may be longer and it may be a slightly more tedious process but it is still uh, doable but is turn around time lesser now that you're working from home creating from home i would say it's about the same i don't think client turn around times uh, as far as thinking execution brainstorming presenting have been affected what of course has been affected is the ultimate output which right. is um, um shooting or actually going on then creating something is obviously still i mean things are far better now than they were uh four months ago uh but having said that it's still that has been affected but the pre the run up to actually creating something i would not uh, i think the back end work may have the uh, the um, the processes the internal processes may have gotten a little more tedious but uh, in terms of presenting to clients i don't think we've really uh, suffered much of a backlog there right so a lot of people tell me now that uh, with the virtual conversations and all that they end up calling each other only for work so it's just uh, made relationships and working transactional what would you say about that i don't know i i'll tell you one thing i i don't necessarily agree with that because uh, i think what has happened is you can't do unscheduled calls anymore mm-hmm. so i think uh, right. i think uh, sp- spontaneity may have gone out of the window Right? right i felt i felt like talking to a friend i felt like talking to an old client i felt like talking to somebody uh, an ex colleague right uh, we take that sort of thing for granted you'd pick up the phone if you suddenly read something about a person or uh, saw something that reminded you of a person and that that doesn't hold true just for your work circle it holds true for everything in your life today right. because a lot of us are living our calendars are now around home chores and working from home maybe spontaneity has gone out of the window but i don't think that our calls are only transactional on the contrary i would say to overcompensate uh, maybe what we have not been able to do uh, via meeting people or just um, the impromptu ad hoc you know call or meeting or whatever we are trying to cover up for with zoom and skype and everything else so i have seen now birthday parties anniversary parties baby showers uh, uh, cel- uh, campaign celebrations all of this so work is professional personal everything has just taken on a different hue you have people sitting around on a friday night uh, raising a toast to someone who's you know having a uh, you know their second child or you have people even client calls i think at least the first 10 or 15 minutes are just spent catching up of course in the initial months of the lockdown it was about and what's the scene in your gully 
is your mohalla lockdown? What about your city? How many people dead? Luckily, and I think for all of us, it's the human condition. When something happens over a period of time, you sort of get it becomes old news in that sense. So now we know that this is the surrounding. We don't Corona doesn't dominate our everyday conversation except for the occasional when do you think we'll be getting back to work. You know, that, that sort of thing. But I don't think uh, relationships have become transactional. I think we're making do with what we can at the moment. That's nice to hear. So I also want to speak to you about your uh, age group for uh, Edil that you always do and what is work created amidst lockdown. So what actually prompted that? Did the client come to you with a brief or did you just go with an idea? And how did it all come together? So uh, this was uh, the f- it was actually the film for Airtel uh, that we did on their recharge uh, in, on the way they have revamped recharging for their prepaid customers would not actually have been done at any other time but the lockdown because it was the lockdown that prompted it. So yes, it was very much uh, it was not a brief uh, generated because it's Corona time one must do something. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that. Right. It was that something. It was something that had actually been done. And we wanted to talk about what had actually been done so that if by chance they were prepared, there's millions of prepaid customers out there whose uh, uh, ability to recharge was seriously hit because every store is shut or was shut. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, this is when I, when I say it's the earliest, I chose to talk about this film because I think it was the first film that Taproot Mumbai did during lockdown. So we knew nothing. We, the production house, the client, all of us were like, okay, New times, unprecedented times, kya karna? You know, how does one, how does one navigate this? But um, it was very real. The brief was very, uh, it was tangible. Um, they had changed the way recharging could be done for people. So the only, I mean, if, you know, you turn, take, take adversity, turn it into opportunity. If the only things that are open are medical stores, are ATMs, are, um, is the post office, then they turned those into uh, recharge points. Right or uh, even empowered anybody with a connection to recharge for somebody else. So they ran these one-on-one programs. So there was a lot happening which could permit people or allow people or encourage people to stay connected because staying connected, I think I think all of us have discovered whether we are prepaid, postpaid, no matter what kind of customer we are, we've realized that connectivity is of the essence when you're cooked up in your house. Right. Imagine you didn't, if you, you and I could not be on this call today without technology, without some, without our broadband. Right. So, so staying connected is of the essence and that is what we had to work with. That was our brief. How do you uh, put out there what we have actually done to enable recharge? Right. Of course, the execution of it, like as you brought out, yeah, this was, this was the first piece we had done. So for, it was a learning for all of us. Like what is possible? What are the glitches that will come up? It's right. things we learned around the, along the way. Happy to say that uh, it, it worked out well. Right. So... Also, this entire scenario has brought in a great deal of upheaval in the way we work. So where do you see the green shoots of opportunity? A positive Sorry, side? Of the situation? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, in terms of opportunities that have cropped up for the ad world in the way you're working. Because now I see a lot of people, a lot of creatives doing work on their own. On domestic violence or on anything on depression. Then I see a great good digital acceleration. So on those lines. Digital acceleration is bound to happen at, you know, in a period like this. It was anyway on the upswing. Right? Right. Because anyway, uh, uh, as, a, as a medium, it is where a lot of people spend their time. Hmm. Um, I've, always, I've always maintained that we, we should look at it. We should, digital is and has continued to be in the last couple of years and uh, definitely more so as we go forward, a very important medium. But that has uh, work done for, I think, ideas are still medium agnostic. That's my view. So in a, in a situation like the lockdown where uh, maybe television or radio was not such a possibility. And then, of course, like as, as time passed, you saw that even that people yeah. found ways. People will find right. a way. That is, that is the essence. But of course, digital is something that is readily available to us in the sense of work can be churned out for the digital medium while you are at home, as, as, as is the case even for static media, right? Of course, it's a different matter now that OH and all, etc., is going to be on the uh, downswing because people are not out and about yet. But I think we can, uh, we are taking baby steps, albeit, but towards normalcy. 
so as as we go along and i'm not saying that life will be exactly what we knew it we don't know nobody has no. any way of knowing that but advertising as we know it will pretty much go back to it will find its own level as it was before the lockdown so more work less work i mean it's it's creative people will always find a way to in indie i think this industry will find a way to stay relevant no matter what the period of time so um even w- during the lockdown people found either there were real briefs or there were people just creating work to stay top of mind right, right? and i think even when as in as in when things uh, get back to normal i think it will be pretty much we'll be debating brands will probably be debating how much of the covid or corona context should reflect in the communication um as opposed to oh can we be doing this uh, is tv still relevant is digital uh, more relevant should we be doing outdoor i don't think that this was a pause as far as i'm concerned i think it was a pause button and not a rejig right. so uh, as we as we resume normalcy the uh, the way advertising was done the way money was channeled i don't see that as being any different and uh, nor do i see the ideation being any different it was it was just at the moment you take what you got and you create work around it and that's right. always been the case right so when we started off we saw a lot of we seen a lot of uh, films uh, shot using the phone we see a lot of user generated content that uh, don't you think that there's been a saturation and have you seen that craft evolved now over time uh phone shot content is going to be phone shot content Right. I have seen um, what I have seen over time are production hacks. So, mm-hmm. for instance, um, when we started out, it was it was people it was people who had iPhones. Right. So, you, you, like for instance, the Airtel film. That are, are one thing that happened, which could not have happened if we were uh, shooting, uh, let's say, in Bombay or in Delhi or in Bangalore, we could not perhaps have uh, sourced. like you know budget and everything being what it is you could maybe not go to five and uh, five cities to look for your cast members so our airtel casting came from jharkhand came from noida uh, came from up right so it was very diverse actually it, very often for regular projects you don't do that you you uh, at best you fly in one or two people from bangalore or delhi or something your entire cast spread around the country locations being around the country is not something that you would have done if it were an ordinary shoot so that's something that uh, remote shooting allows you to do which right. actually if you would if you would have put everything into mehboob studio you would not be doing that right right uh, so that that's i would say it was interesting because for us we learned that casting can literally cast a very very wide net yeah mm-hmm. it was that was that was good to see um yeah but overall saturation coming back to your question it will be reached beyond the point of of this certain kind of um, ads and right. like i said uh, the industry will find a way people will find a way as things started easing out we started uh, doing we started going half way so you know earlier when we started out it was all remote everything is remote your dop is sitting on one zoom frame your directors on one zoom frame client is there agency is there everyone is there producers there and your cast is somewhere else someone's holding an iphone that's how it was working right. these are early days so it's like the evolution process right then we came to a point where you started looking for entire families who could act earlier and this makes it even <laughs> tougher right? so if you need so if you if i think you might find it if you plot a graph of the work that happened let's say in april vis-a-vis the work that happened in the end of may you will find a difference because people discovered what they could do differently early days mein you took one person sat there looked into camera your dop instructed you on the time of day had a look around the house decided which is the best spot all virtually right so you had single people talking into camera this was baby steps mm-hmm. then you moved towards acha if we can have one person in frame can we have two people in frame which will mean or can we have a child which will mean can we have three people all of whom mm-hmm. can act big job for the casting director also after that can we have somebody going in with a tripod so it like sort of stays steady one person who's in the house right then it became okay the director can't travel but we found a great set of people in bangalore who can do this who can act and we have a dop who can go to that location so right. recently some a job that we did had the director uh, on remote and the crew in the house 
so you will not mm. get your lockdown you won't get your typical lockdown look wala film you will get a finished film it's just that now that's nice so i think that's how the progress has been and then uh, i've even have evolved right i think so. i think so because beyond the point even the industry realizes that phone quality is phone quality at the end of the day mm. and there's no no complaints with it i mean it is what we had to do and right. at that point you, you make do communication Absolutely. is still important so i i would i would say it's been no uh, steadily picking up right and uh, how are client budgets now uh, as opposed to when we started off because now is the time august to december is the time the, the industry clocks most of its business so how how have you seen things uh, picking up because i hear that they are having green shoots and uh, things are going better i would certainly hope so not my not my department at all but uh, i would think that uh, as and when more and more is possible to create that's when bu- budgets will be commensurate with what is possible to actually create <clears throat> if if so if you have very few means if you have very few resources if everybody is locked into the house then you're not you're going to find budgets which will match the level of output that you can expect and i would like to think that as things uh, go on things will i think it's going to be a slow burn yeah we'll see how it uh, goes down i don't think there'll be any changes overnight we'll just have to see how well i could be wrong there could be a vaccine uh, well astra astrazeneca could surprise us by september we just hope so so also uh, covid 19 as we know is a humanitarian crisis and a lot of our watchers globally have spoken about not factoring work created for these times so what would be your advice to brands and to agencies when making a, a conversation on covid you know so that uh, to be in a conversation without being exploitative and without using it merely as a marketing ploy or something what you said i think that's totally what we need to do as an industry i think enough has been said uh, by people just because we happen to be in the middle of a pandemic i don't think that's uh, i i don't think that's necessary i don't think uh, consumers beyond the point will bite because i i genuinely do feel you you if you're doing something if you're making a point of this actually something that's going to help uh, or you know if then put it out there by all means right yeah. even sometimes a message of hope right but there's such a thing i think as as too much hope because what tends to happen is that everybody then jumps onto the bandwagon and says we are here for you we are here with so you true. we will go through this together i as a consumer like let's put ourselves not in no let's not wear marketing hats and agency hats let's put ourselves as consumers would we like to like would we wake up in the morning want to switch on our television or look at our phones and have everybody every person from my chewing gum to my car to uh, uh, you know my water purifier telling me that actually we are here for you no you're not we're pretty Absolutely. much doing our own thing <laughs> there's a, there's actually a fatigue building up so yeah that's true yeah. i somehow like mindless work done by amul or by by just brands who are not telling me that just some anyway, mindless cute nice work we should be cognizant as communicators of what we are saying there's no uh, no harm in being optimistic there's no harm in uh, looking forward but generally just saying hum tumhare saath hai because it's the right thing to do it's quite meaningless and you will not just be lost in the noise you will make no sense to your consumer so whatever message i think we put out there must be because there is some kind of brand truth product truth somewhere some willing to it i think that's important then it will resonate perfect thank you so much for your time pallavi it was amazing speaking to you very very candid as usual and that's why we love speaking to you all the time so thank you so much thank you okay, stay connected bye take care of yourself see you see you bye